Good afternoon. Um, this is a demonstration of how to set up the AM32 project to uh, be able to build and debug using a ST-Link debugger on Windows. And uh, so what we've got is a, um, first of all, let me show you on where this PR is. So if we go into AM32 firmware and have a look at um, the AM32 project, then you'll see that there is a pull request open from me at the moment, which adds VS Code build support. So this is the branch that you will need. Um, hopefully this will get merged um, into the master branch of uh, AM32 at some point. Uh, so as it says in the PR here, you're going to need these tools. So there's a tools directory I've created. It's got Linux tools and it's got Windows tools. So if you're on Windows, download the Windows tools. And obviously, if you're on Linux, you download those Linux tools. So you then need to put those tools into the tools subdirectory. So in here, I have unpacked that zip file. So I've got tools, Windows. And within that, I've got make and open OCD and the XPAC ARM EAVI GCC directory, which is our ARM GCC compiler. Okay, so now we've got all of our tools in place, we can run VS Code. And um, so I've just got it set up, you know, to download from GitHub. So I've got this AM32 directory, and it's got all of the source code of AM32 um, sitting in here. So uh, there's one settings you need to, to set up. So if you, if you go into the source code, you'll find there's this .VS Code directory. And within that, there's this file settings.json. And this is the only thing you need to modify for Windows versus Linux. So the default is Windows. So you need to set OS as Windows and the path to where to find make. So uh, on the case of Linux, it's uh, the make path is user bin make usually. On Windows, we're using the, the version of make that comes in that tool zip file that I just showed you. So it's tools, windows, make, bin, make.exe. All right, so that's the only settings you have to actually modify. Um, but the other settings you might like to play with if you've got a different debugger set up is this file, the launch.json. And so I've got two debug setup configurations in this file. One is the AM32 ST link for if you've got a ST link, and that sets all of the necessary settings to be able to use ST link. At the moment, the config file is the AT32F421, and we will be adding more config files as I've got examples that I can test. Uh, then there's also a J-Link setup, and this is what you use if you've got a, a J-Link adapter instead of an ST-Link. But in this particular case, I've got an ST-Link attached. And uh, so let's show, first of all, how to build the project. So um, you've got a little option here where you can choose all the different build targets. It should automatically parse the right build targets. and um, Sorry about that phone call. It should automatically parse all the right build targets out of here. I've got a Fox here F421, so I'm using that as my build target. All right, so I can go and build the code. It's already built here, so it just said done. What I can do is build clean the current target. What that does is deletes, does a clean, and then does the build. And there it's done a build. We ended up with a, a 22K of flash used. So 80% uh, used flash. And um, we've used 3.7K of RAM in that build. All right, so far so good. We're able to build targets. You can also do build all. Um, you could set the target to all and it will build all of them. And I've got this little make parallel option as well which I've used, that sets it up to build with an eight-way parallel. So it does um, eight builds at once, and uh, that saves a, a bit of time when you're, when you're building all of them. Okay, let's jump straight to debugging. And uh, under the debugging, you've got your choice of the ST-Link or J-Link. So I'm using the ST-Link. 
And so what I'm going to do is tell it to attach that debugger like that. And it's now going and attaching the debugger. And it's got slightly silly here with the uh, the display. Let me just check that. And ah, I've got, where's my VS code? There it is. Okay. Unfortunately, it's still <laughs> wanting me to pick that, that parallel mic thing. All right. So we'll just forget that at the moment. So it's now launched the debugger. Uh, I'll do that again without that silly make parallel up. So I'll just stop the debugger and start it again. And it's now launching the debugger. That automatically downloads the firmware you've just built and puts it on the board. And so we could now pause the debugger and there we are paused and we can do all the usual things by hover the mouse to look at uh, variables. So low RPM throttle limit is currently one, step assign is currently zero, et cetera. It's got all of the usual, you know, debugger type features. Um, I can go here and have a look at my global variables and uh, so they're my various global variables that are in the project. And so I'm going to add a live watch for that variable, which means that that variable is now automatically updating. Even while we're running, it'll update down in this little one here. Let's add a, another couple of ones for live watch. And let's add something like the ERPM, which is a good one to watch. So ERPM live watch. So we've got three live watch variables. And they'll tell it to continue. And what you'll see is that these variables are now updating live while the program's running. All right, just to show that the program is indeed running, what I'm going to do is pop over here to beta flight. And um, we're going to go and open up the motors configuration. So I'm just going to now, you can see that it is getting data there. I'm going to run the motor. And while I'm running the motor, you may notice that the RPM is updating down here, the current and the voltage is updating. So we indeed do have a uh, live update of variables within the code. And of course, you can put in breakpoints and you can put in watch points and all the usual things we do a debugger. Um, and of course, you can do things like, you know, single step through the code. Um, you can go and put a, you know, a breakpoint. So we can go and stick a breakpoint in here. And if we continue, it's now jumped up to that point in the code. And then we can go and, you know, get rid of that breakpoint if we want to. All right, so that's probably enough to get people going. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more we could do with this configuration in the future. Um, I did only install VS Code for the first time a couple of days ago. So I'm, I'm a very new user of VS Code, but um, hopefully this is enough to, to get people going. And uh, so um, enjoy AM32 in VS Code.